Hey, so today I'm going to talk about The Secret Lives of Baba Segi's, Segi's Wives by Lola Shonian. I think I'm mispronouncing the last name. Uh, first name is Lola Doe. Uh, published, a novel published in 2010. It's about, I'm trying to see how I can summarize it without doing too many spoilers within this video. Um, it's about kind of what the title says, a uh, man named Baba Segi's and um, the family dynamic in the polygamy family in which he has four different wives and the tension comes in in which he recently um, brought in a new wife which brings in complications and exposes some other things and just shows all the complexities within um, the household of Baba Segi. So first off, we're gonna talk about the cover. Uh, Usually, I would talk right now about how I learned about the book, but I really don't remember. I'm pretty sure it has something to do with Goodreads, though. I've been reading a lot of Nigerian artists, so I'm thinking what had happened was once I finished reading another one, Goodreads was like, oh, other books you might find interesting. And um, the cover is not really that extravagant, even though I think the cover does a great job of depicting what the story is. Uh, like the cover, I'll that in here somewhere but the cover is a green background well the cover that i had i read the ebook edition is a green background with like four silhouettes of ladies and three of the silhouettes are kind of like together journeying forward while it's one silhouette of a lady that's kind of like alone by herself um kind of looking at the audience rather than journeying on with the rest of them and i think that it's one of those covers that once you read the story and you look at the cover, you're like, wow, this actually is a great depiction of what the story is about. But at first, like at first glance of the cover, it's like, hmm, I wonder what this will be about. Um, it kind of indicates that it's going to be about four women, you know, so they're all wives to someone from the title. But yeah, um, after reading it, though, I appreciated the cover way more than before. Uh, moving on to technicality in terms of like the writing style and whatnot of the book. I was not a fan of the different point of views. I think that it would have done the book a greater a greater justice if it wasn't in so many different point of views. You literally have first person, multiple first person point of views and third person point of views and it kind of jumped around in terms of which point of view was being used and I think it would have been so much better if I think it would have been so much better if it was just in uh one person one person's point of view throughout the whole story uh but I think she could have made it work uh well let me not assume that Lola's pronouns are she I think Lola could have made it work if the different point of views would have also just been broken down in different parts because I think the different point of views did add to the complexity and dynamic of the story that was unfolding I think that could have also just I just think that jumping around it took what one chapter will be in one person point of view the next chapter is in a different person point of view and then in through the midst of that you will have a third person point of view I think that that made it difficult to know whose story was being told from the get-go and I think that could have been better established if it was broken down into parts like part one is in this wise point of view part two is in this wise point of view part three is in this wise point of view part four this wife and then the conclusion in third person I think that would have made the story run a lot more smoother um and I think trying to do all different point of views it lacked in like different style and it kind of hindered the character development development of the different characters just because with the switch of point of view the tone or style didn't switch like if you're gonna I think that if you're gonna switch from a point of view of the educated wife to the point of view of a not educated wife and the not educated wife being like despising the educated wife that you can't use the same diction and um tone and vocabulary that you use for the educated wife with the not educated wife it doesn't help with that development and that distinguish and distinct characterization of each character yeah um 
but I really think that Lola is a great writer like I love the different vocabularies. I love books that make me have to look up words while I'm reading it. And that definitely was something that I had to do with this novel. And I love the way, I love the writing style. Like Lola is the type that write in parables. Um, they use they use stories within stories. They use a lot of different proverbs. Um, and I love that type of style of writing. I love learning new proverbs. And I love like how that how a story can help develop another story in that all coming together um and i think that that could have shown better with a different point of views and sh even allowed us to learn more about the characters and their background through that style of writing of parables and whatnot um yeah i think that ultimately though if she would have just or they would have stuck to bolane's point of view which was kind of like the main character the story's kind of centered around Belaine. Belaine is the one that triggers the story um that that would have been just fine or uh even I even think that that she could have also they could have also just used Belaine to tell the stories of the others but I also understand the want to like have those different perspectives within I think if you're going to do that though you have to have to actually make the perspectives different and not just a different character with the same perspective and tone and style yeah um on to the story though the story was good <laughs> like this was one of the stories that I did not want to put down like I kept I will set a limit for myself like okay today I'm going to read three chapters and next tomorrow I'll read three more chapters but this was the type of story that I was set like oh I'm only going to read three chapters and end up reading half of the book in one sitting because the story was just good like you just wanted you just wanted to know okay and now what? oh what's about to happen next what like it's just one of those stories especially especially once it hit the climax of like everything started to come together and unravel I, I could not put the book down like I finished I had to finish the book and know how it was going to end so I think the narrative is really 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 good this is a great story it was it was fantastic it was very interesting it definitely grabs your attentions and keep hold of your attention um I think like it was a range of characters uh and with that range of characters but you can always connect them and it just shows how complex and dynamic the narrative really was with the range of characters and how they were all different but coming together um especially once you get to the conclusion that range of characters really fall to make the stew as good as it is like the drama as good as it is when everything all of those range of characters are finally like in that living room scene and the truth comes out like I think that was a great and I think that not only were there a range of characters but they were unique characters you didn't have like tropes well um I didn't I didn't really pick up on any tropes of any of the characters and they were really realistic like even if you thought the character was going to fit into a trope you learn the backstory you learn about them through their characteristics you learn about them as from their actions within the story and you realize how unique they are and how complex and dynamic they are and I think that really added to my like not wanting to put the book down but with that being said I think it was a great story and it ended just right as well like the conclusion was fairly the conclusion that ended the chapter of this like that ended the narrative that ended the story and I was satisfied with that ending and um like I I enjoy books I always who doesn't like a series like sequels are always good but sometimes the sequels are forced and pushed when it could have just been one novel but I think Lola had a good grasp that this is one novel one story that can be told in just this one and I think that sh they wrapped it up really well at the end like I was very satisfied at the end of the book and satisfied with the conclusion of the story um yeah but with that being said the story that is being told raised a lot of questions for me um a few of them were what are what are the agreements um in polygamous relationships and polygamy and how do that shift the standards of adultery because i think one of the big main points of polygamous relationship and polygamy is the multitude of partners it's not monogamous which shifts the idea of adultery of like 
cheating on your spouse but let's keep in mind the difference between polyandry and polygamy this was definitely a polygamous relationship but not necessarily a polyandrous relationship in terms of it was the man with multiple partners and not necessarily the woman but that kind of made me think well how does that translate for the woman where you come into this agreement with your spouse that y'all will have multiple it's okay for them to have multiple relationships do that do that standard do that morality that morale do that does those values also shift for you in terms of taking up multiple partners um like i said i don't want to say too much about that because i don't want to spoil the book but just that i it made me think when women enter polygamy polygamous relationship or agree to being um one wife out of many do that shift for them what they think of as adultery or cheating or their idea of having multiple spouses as well like if i'm agreeing to being um a wife of many do that mean that i can have multiple partners um yeah so i was really uh, that was a big question for me and something that i wondered about and wanted to learn more about after reading the book um the next one was how does polygamy shift the desire of biological children what does this do for the family structure that we are used to um like ah oh, it's so hard to talk about this book without spoiling the plot but it just made me think of even with the multiple wives in the household the children of the house are the children of the house like of course the mothers mother their children directly but all of the mothers kind of mother the children in different ways as well so it just made me think of how does polygamy shift the idea of biological children when all of your children of the house are all of the children of the house rather than oh this is the child that i birthed so this is the only one that i want to take care of and even beyond that like how does that shift the family structure of these are my children versus these are our children so it just made me think about those things um one particular plot line that i'm thinking of is the character of taju uh who was the driver bobby segi's driver and how he knew of uh, of his other children but didn't necessarily identify them or consider them his children versus the children that were in his household so for me what i was picking up is that it wasn't necessarily about biological children the children that you helped create or contributed to in terms of dna but necessarily but more so about the children within your household the children that you are actually fathering or mothering in some way um and i that made me think a lot in terms of this idea of it takes a village or even about things of like fertility and whatnot like people that can't have children people that adopt and why we are so fixed on biological children when there are so many children in this world that needs homes and needs parents and why is that look why is having a child physically biologically seen as better than adopting a child and parenting children that are already here that need parents um and another thing that uh, this book made me question is why is monogamy seen as the default what is wrong with multiple baby mamas if you want to take care of them like baba segi married each wife and wanted children with them but he also married them for a particular reason and that reason wasn't necessarily like oh my wife is lacking something let me marry this one this one to make up for this one it was like they all had their own very distinct reasonings for being a wife or for him picking to marry them in the first place i'm once again not going to get into that because i don't want to spoil it too much but it also made me think of like what is so wrong with that like what's wrong with having multiple wives if you are taking care of them if you have the means to take care of them like something that was um prominent in this book was the idea that um you had to have riches to have multiple wives like baba segi was seen as a successful businessman that's why he was able to take up four wives versus like monogamous um and of course like religion kind of played a factor in that as well so it just made me think of why we automatically default monogamy as like everyone's everyone should be monogamous versus like that being something that 
you should learn about yourself and like learn about you in terms of like relationships and what you want and what you need um versus like that being placed upon us because it it seems like it can work for some people um if that is something that they're open and honest about from the get-go so overall i give this a a five out of ten i think this was a good book i really enjoyed that it was just a good story um like i've made relevance for it i've thought about things deeper than what the story is but this is just a nice reminder that it's okay to enjoy just like the story the narrative sometimes it doesn't always have to comment on these bigger issues of the world like yes we need books to do that too but there are other ways to like question our world and question oppression and all of these things without blatantly and outright doing those but subtly doing that with stories that are enjoyable um stories that are relatable stories that are realistic and stories that are not like outright saying a message so um yeah i Lola is more so a poet um from what I've learned and read about um them so this was their first like debut novel so I don't know if I'll read any more about Lola that's necessarily a novel maybe I'll look into the poetry of Lola um but yeah I really enjoy the story I think that the besides the different point of views I think the writing was nice I think the cover is like what I look for in covers in terms of like oh the cover is interesting enough to grab my attention and then it makes even more sense why the cover was the cover after I read the book. Um, and I think that not necessarily, there's a lot going on right now. This is not like this question of polygamy is not something that's like on the nas national or international stage right now. But it definitely raised some questions that made me think about what I want in relationships and what are the different alternatives and how those different alternatives play out. Um yeah i probably should have said this in the beginning but the book was set in nigeria um i think lola is nigerian as well but yeah a great a great novel